Brothers at War 1862. This is a war game about the American Civil War. It is at the brigade level. It is mainly for two players uh, as the uh, battles represented are two-sided. But you can play solitaire two hand and no problem there because the game revolves around a chit pull mechanic which as you may know uh, creates a lot of uncertainty and allows you to have a lot of surprises and unexpected twists and turns even when you're playing both sides at the best of your possibilities. So we got four battles, so some pretty iconic such as South Mountain or Antietam and some much less gamed such as Mill Springs or Valverde. I think this is the first time I ever played a game about Valverde for example. So you got four battles, four maps, each battle has multiple scenarios so if you like the game system you get a lot of value here. First thing, let's take a look at the maps. In general, I want to show you that these maps have unusually large hexes, which is very nice, so you really have room to spread out your components, to take a look at what you got in the stacks. You don't even have to have stacks. You can place units next to each other and they still fit in that hex. That's really pretty cool. And what you have here is very practical, uh, still atmospheric and nice looking paper maps. There's one for Mill Springs, but again I want to get give you a sense of, of the maps so you also see what are the tactical possibilities that are that are here. We have South Mountain there with of course uh, uh, an elevation here, heavy wooded here areas around here, so it's a it's a tricky situation, but you still have roads that go around it, and so you may try to maneuver to approach the central area in different ways. Valverde, it's more of an empty... Oh, we have a wooded area there, and a, and, a, and a change in elevation here, and the river there, but still, it's mainly an empty area. Then we got Antietam, variety of terrain here, but the wooded areas are on the side, and the cornfield is gonna attract a lot of attention of course and then back where we started from uh, the miserable battlefield of Mill Springs fighting in winter in an area covered with thickets we have a elevated area here where, where the confederates are placed so very different tactical situations here and again very impressive production with these paper maps that give you such cool Large hexes. As I said, the game is chit pull, so you're gonna place activation chits in a cup representing the different commanders that are there. Also, there is a token there that indicates the possible end of the of the turn. There's only one in the cup at the beginning of a scenario, and as activation chits are drawn. They're placed on this display here, and so now we're gonna activate uh, Manson's group, and we do that. After we resolve that, we're gonna draw another one, and now Wolfer goes. And when we place a chit in an area, when we place a chit in um, in a box with that with that symbol, with the with the watch symbol. And we take one of these tokens and we place it here. The turn will be over when uh, two of those uh, two of those watch tokens have been have been pulled from the cup. And so at the beginning there is no risk because there's only one in the cup that the turn will end very prematurely. But as the turn continues, uh, then more of these are added. And so uh, you don't know exactly when the turn is going to end, who is going to activate in a certain turn and so on and so forth. You see some symbols there indicating cards. This is not a card driven game, but it is card enhanced, meaning that there are cards the players receive and they draw when that symbol is covered. And some cards don't do anything, so the idea is that, oh, well, too bad for you. <laughs> that just clogging your hand and not doing anything. And there is a, is a very large range of effects, uh, and cards can be played at very different times. So there definitely are some plot twists uh, there. Uh, I personally, again, play the game Solitaire Two-Handed, so I simply play with the two hand of cards face up, playing cards when it would make sense, and I didn't have any problem there. So again, units are, uh, are, um, are 
uh, organized under specific commands and those commands also uh, correspond to uh, player aid here that indicates casualties, reserves, and availability of skirmishers. So each brigade has a skirmisher unit that can be deployed at some point in the game, can also be removed. And very important, there is a number of reserves. And depending on the scenario, you may already start with some of your reserves that have been <laughs> depleted by previous events in the in the tactical situation. But when <clears throat> When a unit from a certain command would be eliminated, eliminated only, you cannot use reserves to avoid other effects. When a unit from a command would be eliminated, then you can choose, don't have to, to spend a reserve. And so far it seems like a cheap way of getting rid of, of fatal hits. However, if the reserves ever get to the exhausted box, that is pretty bad because then there is a fate step, a fate check during the end phase of each turn and you gotta roll a die and it may be that the exhausted brigade will break, which means it is removed entirely from the board, which is pretty bad. However, casualties are also nothing to, <laughs> to underestimate when a unit is eliminated because either you don't have reserves or you choose not to spend them, then a casualty token is placed again on the track of the group that is taking that damage. And when all the dark boxes on that display are covered, that is also when the unit breaks. So you're gonna try to, you have to decide if you wanna exhaust this at the risk of getting eliminated through exhaustion or you're gonna take casualties, but again, being breaking is, is pretty bad. It's pretty bad, of course. So we said we're gonna pull our chits to determine which commander, which commander goes at any given time. And I placed here units in a way that, that look kind of cool, not necessarily how they are at set up in this scenario. Come on, they look cool. Um, commanders, commanders do not have uh, printed values like movement or combat or anything like that, like you have in other, in other games. So it's more of a, it's a more abstract way of representing the rage of agency. Matter of fact, during the turn, they can teleport. You can put them anywhere you want. Of course, it wouldn't make any sense to place them where they're too far, but the point is that uh, they can just jump around, but you want units under a commander to be within a range of four, that's the command range, because then they can activate fully and without having to take any checks. When a command activates, suppose that again Manson just activated, units in that command can spend movement points and that is the value in the bottom right corner the other value is the other value is firepower also units can be infantry can be in a formed uh, state like you see here it can also be unformed and sometimes you change state because of game effects and sometimes you choose to do so and there is a pretty good flexibility here in how you spend those movement points almost feels like they are mm, they're action points really because you can spend movement points for wait for it moving in which case you move on the map spending points based on movement allowance uh, based on terrain different terrain features will uh, force you to spend different amounts of points you can choose to fire in which case so uh, well uh, you spend a number of you spend two movement points and you fire on an enemy uh, up to the range of the unit infantry has a range of three artillery has a printed range which may vary and they can also artillery try to fire over uh, further than the printed range with penalties of course uh, if you enter an area containing enemy units then you start an assault which is just a different form of combat with different modifiers and and no save rolls you can spend movement points to uh to produce a skirmisher unit again um, they, they, so they are these kind of units and they have slightly different rules. So maybe the, the, the general idea is really very simple. It's uh, pull a chit, see who goes, spend movement points to mainly fire, <laughs> move, move and fire. Uh, you can also spend them to change formation from a form to unformed and vice versa. Is many, many move and fire. 
it's uh, it's a word game. But then again, you're slightly different ways in which different units uh, will activate, and that adds a little more fiddliness and or complexity. So. Move and fire. This is the heart of the war game, right? Uh, when you are firing, it's a bucket of dice extravaganza because firepower indicates the number of dice that you roll and there may be game effects that will change the number of dice, adding or removing. And also there are game effects that will simply change the numbers like plus one or minus one to the dice that you roll. The general idea is this though, that the standard default value for checks in the game is 5 or 6 is a hit. Other than that, it is a miss. Lower than that, it is a miss. And so, uh, 5 or 6 is a hit uh, in combat, in assault, in fire, when you're trying to rally um, disrupted units. So, you roll the dice. And booyah, you see if you had a number of successes. Oh, look at that. I scored three hits. That was pretty good. I didn't change those dice or cheat at all. So, this would be three hits, for example. And then, depending on, on factors and circumstances, uh, the target unit may get uh, save rolls. And that would be based, say, on the distance. So, if you fire at a distance, you get... If you're fired at at a distance, you get a save roll for each intervening hex. Range, maximum range is three. So, again, you can get up to two uh, saves, save rolls based on that, based on distance. The terrain that you're in gives you a save. Whether the, uh, if the enemy moved before attacking, that's moving fire, that gives you dice for save rolls. So basically, you t uh, card effects may help your attack, may help your defense. So, in regular fire, after the opponent totals the number of hits that he scored against you, you calculate how many dice you get to save uh, for save rolls, you roll, and again, a 5 or a 6 is a success. Each successful save roll eliminates a hit. Remaining hits need to be absorbed by the unit that took the damage. A infantry unit that is formed and takes a hit becomes unformed. An unformed unit that takes a hit becomes disrupted. And a disrupted unit that takes a hit is eliminated unless, you remember, they have reserves available and you decide to spend them. And again, early on, it feels like there is an endless uh, amount of reserves I can use uh, un un until there aren't. A unit that takes an elimination hit and is not saved by a reserve is eliminated. And remember, we take, we also keep track of the casualties that the brigade took uh, to see how close the unit, the, the the brigade is to break. Uh, that's the idea, really. Pull a chit, activate units, uh, per, um, move and fire, per, perform other actions in some cases. Assault, as I said, is resolved exactly like a, a, uh, a fire, but both sides are firing. There are different modifiers, and I think you guessed it. Uh, if you soften up a unit by disrupting it first with fire and then you assault it, better chances of destroying it, but in Assault, both units attack each other, apply modifiers, and then they just apply hits. There are no, there are no uh, saves there, and if, if a unit is eliminated, well, so be it. The other unit stays there, otherwise the unit that took the most hits has to retreat. So, in essence, uh, a couple of other rules, of course, for rally checks, command checks, but this is not a tutorial. I'm not going to cover every rule. This is how you play in general, brothers at war, and for victory conditions, each scenario, each scenario has their own, uh, has its own victory conditions. But usually, taking control of certain areas, exiting units from an edge, and or inflicting pain and destruction on the enemy units are the things that in most scenarios you're going for. Brothers of War is an excellent game. I liked it so much. There's so much value, so many different battles, and basically it embodies all the things that I like in War Game. It has my favorite mechanic, which is Chit Pull. It has some of my favorite things, like Bucket of Dice. So that's, just, that's just fun, dumping all those dice. Uh, you have um, Opportunity Fire, that is also fun also. I think I didn't mention that, but usually when you uh, when you activate your units and they do stuff, you place a finish marker on them, indicating that they, they're done. Uh, but you can choose when they should be activated to hold fire, and instead, 
or holding fire means that then they're not finished so they are available for opportunity fire because or that may also happen if they haven't activated yet at all because if an enemy unit moves in line of sight and range of the of a unit that still has that element that possibility you can opportunity fire so you're gonna have very dynamic turns because with the chit pull you're gonna have people activate two units now the other side activates four the other side who gets a bigger activation but i get to opportunity fire them so there's a back and forth between the sides that is that is very interesting and very fun and again uh as a solo as a mainly solitaire war game who love war gamer who loves to play games to hand the chit pull is just perfect that way because I don't know what's gonna happen next. I don't know if that side is gaining momentum. If I don't know if that side will be able to exploit the certain gains that they made or the other side gets a couple of activations there. Uh, and if you're playing with a human opponent, of course, it still works because you have the same advantages of that element of unpredictability, of fog of war, of interesting dilemmas and, and choices that will emerge based on the uncertainty that you have there. I also very much like, again, bucket of dice because it's so satisfying that's all that's a good number of hits uh, but then there are save rolls so you're building up to opportunities or you can just choose for a lot of fire that may be kind of ineffective but there's a lot of it maybe you get that lucky shot that i do get that one hit and you fail your four save rolls it may happen um so a lot of opportunities there again either to just go for it or build up to opportunities. I fire, I place somebody, then I'm firing without the giving you the advantage of moving fire, then I disrupt you, then that's when I send in somebody with the assault. But again, it takes time and in many scenarios, so I, I, I really like the other scenarios, they are timed well, uh, that you really get the sense that you have the incentive of taking your time and building out the perfect attack. You just don't have the time, so uh, it's a very interesting tension there. If you take too much time building the perfect attack, the, or the one that gives you the best odds, you may not be able to achieve your objectives by the end of the scenarios. Very nice tension there. Plus, you have variety of gameplay with all of these battles. It definitely was nice to discover some new battles that I never, I never seen in a war game before. The production is absolutely impressive because of all these maps, uh, the counters are nice and thick. And again, one last thing that I really, really like is the uh, reserve system. It really, it really makes the point that violence in warfare is, is the means uh, that you use to break the will of the opponent. Very often I score a hit and I remove the unit. There is a sense that violence just you know eliminate annihilated the opponent well here you really see well first it's it's a really painful meat grinder so you really get the sense of the cost of people being thrown in for no other reason than then to be to be destroyed also until other people are thrown in until there isn't anybody to do that that job anymore so there is a sense of the human cost which is very important um, but at the same time, again, you have a sense of the violence, the killing, having ultimately a moral effect. When you remove units from the board, from a unit that broke, and those units may not have seen a lot of combat, may not have, uh, have been at the center of the action, but it really gets you the sense of violence and death as demoralizing the opponent. And again, in game... So, Conceptually, that is something I find very interesting and valuable in a war game. And mechanically, it also mechanically it also works because you see the, the impending doom, the approaching end of your unit, and you decide if you want to try to save them a little bit, to, to save them for later. They may recover some reserves if you if you want to engage them in action a lot. But will that make a difference, or you just go all out and you know that they are not gonna make it, and so you're just trying to. Uh, gain some advantages before they break. Again, the, the reserve slash breaking system that includes that element of morale, to me, that's very valuable. So I only have good things to say about this set and that's and that's all I'm gonna say then. I'm only gonna say good things. I'm not gonna really think, oh, there's a negative there just for, for I don't know, the form of the review. I liked it. I liked everything in this game. It has some of my favorite uh, mechanical elements of war gaming. It has a variety of gameplay, multiple battles, multiple scenarios, great production. I loved it.